All right. So yeah, we are live now. All right. Hi, Brad. Hi, Herb. This is the uh, first time we all got to meet together online. So that's cool. And I know we have a lot that we want to talk about regarding, you know, Herb, since he strings a lot with college players, we wanted to kind of get his input. And also, uh, Brad, you did a lot of work this week as far as trying to figure out what are college players out there uh, using for string. And so we wanted to kind of kind of uh, just chat around that and just any other tips and, you know, our, our usual, uh, you know, unique style here. So um, we're, we're going to try to keep it within a certain time limit today, right? We're going to try to make this happen within 30 minutes, right? So uh, let's let's see how that works out. But uh, yeah, hey, happy holidays, guys. Well, thank you, too. Same to you. Yeah, we got Hawaii, Texas, and New York here. Represented, so, that's right. Yeah. Across the country. Yeah. Nice. All right. So I don't know, Brad, you want to start start this off? Well, I, um, you know, I think, as I just mentioned before we came on the air, I think, you know, Herb has the most experience with stringing for college players in Texas. I've, um, I volunteer at a local university here as an assistant coach, University of Rochester. So today's topic is we're going to discuss, you know, what are the college users, uh, college players using predominantly. And um, so this week I did a, a bunch of research and I, um, I, uh, you know, a lot of it was geared around the men. I talked to a lot of, uh, I had more male players get back to me. I reached out to some female players too. And I talked to some of the uh, men's coaches uh, around the country and, and, and one, one uh, ladies coach. And um, so what I, what I've discovered is there's a, a handful of strings that are used by the majority, but then there's mm -hmm. some that use this kind of, you know, not as popular string. So there are, you know, there are the exceptions and stuff, but um, I talked to um, basically three people um, real quick. I, I talked to a, a buddy I grew up with, Jeremy Wurtzman. He's the I guess, six years head coach at Indiana University. And so he, um, you know, he checked with his players. So what are some of his players using? He's got two players using Luxalon ALU Power, one Power Rough 125. Got three players using Luxalon ALU Power. Got one player using Hyper G 16 gauge and three players using Hyper G 125 gauge. So that was kind of interesting to see. We all know that Hyper G is really, really popular in college tennis. Uh, they do an incredible job of marketing and, and promoting their product um, and, and getting out there. So yeah, and, and so you're talking about Selenko, the brand, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right. Anybody out there that doesn't know um, know uh, Hyper G by yep. by its name, but yeah, Selenko right. is the brand, Selenko. right? And I think that's I think that word's going to come up a lot today in our in our stream because Selenko seems to be a the brand that uh, you'll see a lot at that college level. And I think you know when I went on their website and I was checking out some things, I noticed that they definitely do a lot of recruiting to the coaches, right? Yeah. And so then of course that gets straight to the team you know if the team is sponsored by that they're they're most likely going to be using a lot of selenko uh strings. Yeah, so like say like uh selenko sponsors tech so uh and, and i don't know how many they get but like the first of the semester like back in august they'll get a big box of selenko string that selenko sent, sends to them that's why they use so much of it so uh -huh. they get i don't know i'm going to say it was like either four or five reels they have four or five reels and this is each team men's and women's they got Hyper G, the tour bike, and they use a lot of tour bike here. Uh, Revolution and Confidential, and they also send them. They also send them a bunch of the Slinko bags, so they all carry Slinko bags. And oh, nice! Yeah, you know, um, there's just a, a a large number of coaches that that are you know you can look on the website and you can just see the you know, all the college teams that are represented. And so when you're talking about tech, Herb, you're talking about Texas Tech or? Yeah, Texas Tech. Tech, Texas Tech. Okay. A big university there. Yeah. And I, you know, I, Selenko does also make multi-filament strings. You know, I just recently picked up some Vanquish. I haven't played with it, but I wanted to try some of the other multi-filaments and compare it to, you know, my, what I'm used to and stuff. So I wanted to try that. So I don't know. You probably get a little bit of that too, Herb, right? With the, with the college players, maybe, but much i got a few that'll hybrid but not very many uh most of them that do will use uh oh uh, very uh, i will say that not very many of them use the vanquish 
so they find that it shreds real fast. Yeah, they it's interesting. Know. I work with a girl uh, who plays for Notre Dame, and she, uh, matter of fact, I was on the court with her this morning, and a, and a couple other guys. We had a little group together, and I string for her when she's home. And she she was using a, a full bed mains and crosses of Yonix Polytor Pro 125. Um, she wanted something a little bit different, so I suggested let's try a multi-filament in the crosses. Mm -hmm. Soften up the string bed a tiny bit, and she, and she loves it. And I and I use it, the Vanquish in her crosses, and she likes it a lot too. And one of the things I discovered in a few of my conversations this week that a lot of the college stringing um, depends on the budget of the school or the player also. And um, so for Julia at Notre Dame, she that's the girl I work with. So Julia. Um, you know, at Notre Dame, they, they can't restring their rackets unless the string breaks. And some of those girls, you know, they would keep the polyesters in there for quite a while and they get dead and they don't mm -hmm. play well after after many hours. And so now with the vanquish, like Herb said, she gets seven or eight hours out of it and she'll break the crosses before she'll break the poly in the mains. And so then she gets a fresh string job. So that works out. Um, what I discovered in college tennis is there's less, much less hybrids than you might find at the professional level like yeah. we talked to you Almost know all full bed. yeah they're all full beds for the most part there with the exception of a, a couple here and there you know yeah. so I, I i also spoke to um sean prokes and i don't know if you guys know sean he is the um manager of the racket bar at the national campus in orlando and sean's father is roman prokes i don't know if you if you've heard of roman prokes is saying, yeah. Yeah, so Roman is somewhat, yep. you know, legendary, and you know, he Djokovic yep. credited his father with kind of turning his game around when his father analyzed Djokovic's racket and said, "Hey, I think we should eliminate one of your crosses, open up the string pattern a little bit more, and let's add, you know, a sixteenth of an inch onto your racket length. So now you'll use a twenty-seven point one inch racket, among some other tweaks, and it really paid off for." Uh, for Djokovic, but Sean, his son, is the manager down in Orlando. So they string every single event that comes through the national campus. Mm -hmm. He said in 2019, they did about 13,000 rackets. Um, last year was a little bit less because of, of COVID and stuff, but they have yeah. winter nationals coming up next week. And he said they'll do a thousand rackets. They had the NCAA tournament um, in the spring, this past spring, they did about 800 to a thousand rackets. And what Sean mentioned, um, let me get my notes out. So Sean said that, well, they use Wilson Bayardo down at the national campus. So all the, all the rackets are strung on a Bayardo and Herb is the one that kind of really, you know, just told me to pull the trigger and buy a Bayardo, which I did. So I, I thank you Herb for that. I love it. Um, but he said he sees a lot of the players down there when he's strung for the NCAAs in full beds of poly. And he was, they were Luxlon ALU Power, either 16L, 125 or 130. He saw a lot of RPM Blast, a lot of Selenko Hyper G, a lot of uh, Selenko Torbite, a, a lot of Yonix Polytor Pro. And he started seeing a few of the Yonix Polytor Rev. Yeah. I guess it's a newer string. I yeah, haven't. That's new. Have you strung a little bit with that, Herb? I've, I've seen. When we had the pro tournament in September, I had a couple of players that had it, but there's only okay. a couple of them. Gotcha. So he said that they, they put more Selenko stencils on than any other stencil. Yeah. Right. And that's pretty wild because if, if players are getting rackets for free, they're going to need to put the racket stencil on. So for Selenko to get the stencils put on, maybe a lot of these players aren't getting free equipment or it's because of the contract with the university that, to get the contract, they're required to put the Selenko stencil, but I'm not positive how that works. But that's that's his experience at the uh, tennis center at the at the um, you know national campus. But what he said at NCAA tournament last year was that the teams that seemed to do the best were the teams that restrung the most. The most yeah. Yeah. So Baylor, he said Baylor, who's I, number two in the country behind maybe University of Florida. Baylor strung 140 rackets. That was the most by far. University of Florida, they, they strung 80, 80, 80 rackets. So, 
you know, that's just in, in, in a tournament for, for the week and stuff. So he said the players would maybe play one or two matches. They'd cut them out and restring them. So they really understood the importance, especially with these polyesters, the way they lose tension, some of them over 50% tension loss. So yeah. that was kind of what I learned from Sean at the um, national campus there at the rec. Park. Yeah, it does. And Baylor, the, their stringer, they just put students on uh, work study hours, and that's how they pay them. So uh, every, whenever one of them decides to leave or graduate, they have to train somebody new. And if they take a road trip where they're actually taking the van, they'll take their uh, stringer machine and stringer with them. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would imagine usually on a team you've got a couple guys that, you know, can at least string decently or, or you know, get the job done. Well, you know, and, and what I found, they, I talked to a lot of them, all of them do something different. Uh, yeah. I can't remember, it's either Memphis State or Mississippi State, I think Memphis State, the men's team and the women's team, they actually both give up a half scholarship and they put a stringer on scholarship for four years. Wow. So that kind of works out. But a lot of them, they just contract with local guys or they'll just do the work yeah. study hours and have students. And in fact, we have a, another university in town that's starting a men's and women's program next year. And uh, that's what they're doing. They're just going to put a kid on work study program and let him string rackets for them. That's really, that's a good, that's really, not, that, yeah, I think that's kind of cool. But yeah, um, just, you know, back on, um, you're talking about Roman, his son and so forth. Yeah. You know, he runs in New York there. He runs RPNY, you know, Roman Prokes, uh, New York in uh, somewhere, I think in Manhattan or somewhere. I don't know exactly where in New York, but yeah, he does, he does some tremendous work. He does a lot of customizing. Um, I learned a lot from him when, uh, when uh, uh, I think it was a 2008 U.S. Open, because he was working with the Wilson team, trying to you know get a lot of the, the stringers up to speed and, and kind of showing them some things. And, and plus, he had some of his own players at that time. I think he was stringing for, and so we kind of worked together at, at the U.S. Open there. So, yeah, he's 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 a great knowledge wealth of knowledge. He he's been doing it a long time because he used to work under Jay, you, you, which you know, right? Jay Schwein. Yeah, Jay. Yeah, he used to work under him way back when until you know. Jay uh, gave that up, but um, yeah, they they go back pretty far, you know. As far as uh, you know, I can understand why they know they know a lot of people and they they're really connected with that. Um, but college, yeah, I, I I guess I just never really thought that there was that much string in, at, at the college level. Um, yeah, and um, again, it all depends on the college. Cause like, yeah, of course, your, right. your big colleges, you like a lot of the big D ones, not all of them, but most of them, uh, you know, that that's part of their budget. So that's why I get so many rackets. I mean, as long as the kids wants to string, you know, they're going to let them string. Uh, but you have some of these smaller schools. I mean, they might supply them a, a machine and the kids have to string their own racket or they won't supply anything. They have to have them strung out on their own or I've trained kids to string just so when they went to college, they can string for their team. So, yeah. And some of these kids, you know, they're busy as it is. And if they're just learning to string, you know, on a crash course, it's like they don't want to spend an hour to string one racket when they've got practice, they've got studies, mm -hmm. they, you know, so so it's, it usually doesn't go so well um, that it, unless it's someone that comes in who had been stringing for his high school team and has got a few years experience. I don't think it lasts long if you just train in someone, you know, when they show up at school, how to be a stringer. That's tough. But yeah. Yeah. And we have a uh, PCS stringing here with us today and he's been giving some good comments. Uh yeah, he was talking about, yeah, he mentioned RPNY being in New York City and uh, um, talking about why PTP is a fairly soft poly. Um, yeah, I saw a lot of that during the pro tournament. That was probably the, you know, years past, it was always the uh, uh, RPM blast. This year was the uh, uh, Yonex Pro, Poly Tour Pro. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, that's a really soft string. That's one of the mm -hmm. few strings that are going to be under 200 for the string stiffness test. The Yonex Polytor Pro, um, it comes in around like one, 180 or 181, whereas like you get a Luxalon 4G and you're up near 280 for string stiffness. So I think for players that are, you know, wanting a softer poly, uh, Yonex Polytor Pro is 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 quite good. Um, yeah. But, it, you know, it doesn't have great tension maintenance. It's got mm -hmm. a 47% tension loss. So that's where Selenko Hyper G does... Uh, Quite a bit better. They're right around 200, um, 19 for string stiffness. So a little bit higher, but their tension yeah. maintenance is 26. percent So yeah, that's you know, that's really that's really good for a poly. You know, 26. Yeah. 
Um, Selenko Confidential is like 21 or 22 percent. That's one of the best. Gamma Ochoa yeah. is very yeah. low. And so just for a reference, I guess we can just talk about. So I, I see natural gut as usually maintaining tension to about they lose maybe 10 to 12 percent, maybe 10 right. to 15, maybe. Right. And then yeah. multifilaments would be the next ones that would maybe go. You know, you might lose up to maybe 20 percent. I don't know, with multifilaments, maybe a little bit more. And then the synthetics, right, the other the other synthetics would go. Um, you know, there's a wide variety there as far as, you know, ten, uh tension maintenance and stuff but then all of a sudden the polys man they just drop off the side of the cliff right I yeah mean, they can be anywhere from 20 to 55 yeah. 60 percent tension right. loss which is and why, that's why when people that's why when people just say yeah put it put in a poly you know because they 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 kind of kind of you know they, they're thinking like oh yeah a poly is you know i see somebody playing with this one type of a poly and so that so if i just say poly it doesn't matter what poly they put in it's just going to be you know equivalent right but yeah. it just, you know, that's a whole, it's just a whole line of strings that has just so many variabilities. And like you were saying, Selenko has got some pretty decent ones. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a few with Luxalon as well and some of the other companies. And and you just really have to know what the, the tension maintenance is on all those um, yeah. to really uh, get an idea of, of maybe what you should move into next. You know, if you're playing with one and you're just finding that it's going dead too quick, you know, um, do a little research, right? Um, yeah. You know, contact one of us or whatever too, and uh, we can definitely, you know, recommend some things. And I, I have a lot of, actually, a lot of my subscribers will will sometimes ask about some of those strings and stuff. So what's a little bit better, and what's maintain, you know, t keeping the tension a little bit better, especially when you're spending close to fifteen, twenty dollars on a string, and if it's only lasting you, you know, I mean, if if the tension maintenance, I mean, if if you can, if you're losing thirty to forty percent over a period of a week or two, you know, you're not going to get your 15, 20 hours in most of the time, right? Of play, play time. Cause if you can get 15, I don't know, what do you guys think? 15 to 20 hours in, in a poly is pretty decent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're I, mean, I, <laughs> I can give them six months. <laughs> yeah, know, right? But by that time it's the strings probably not even worth playing with anymore. Yeah. But I don't hit hard enough to matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's I, why I kind of like, I'm sorry, multi-filament. That's, that's me. I mean, just because, you know, my, my arms are just, they can't take it. And, uh, you know, I'm old. So, um, me too. You know, I, yeah. I, you know, I need something that's going to keep my arm on the court longer. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's what I'm doing also. Um, it's just such a difference. I was on today with three college kids or two college players and a high school player. And, you know, I was in a, a full bed of natural gut and it was, it was wonderful. It was great. But, so I just want to mention one other guy I spoke to who's who's really got his foot in the door of college tennis, and he's been uh, University of North well the North Carolina Tar Heels yeah uh, for the last 18 years Jay Lewandowski, and he's been a professional stringer and I I was put in touch with him, um, I think it was with I don't remember it might have been the coach at Notre Dame Allison and uh, possibly Jeremy at Indiana had both both mentioned him. And he's he's kind of made a name for himself in Division One, actually possibly all the divisions of college tennis. But he's under contract um, by 40 NCAA teams to fly out to the schools, meet with the players, talk about you know what what would benefit their game the most. So he gets into racket customization also. So they'll tweak the rackets and then he'll match all of their rackets to be identical. And then they also gets into the stringing with them, and he. He does uh, some private contracts. So during the NCAA tournament, when it was at the national campus last this past year in, in Orlando, you know, the majority of the players all went to the racket bar where Sean Prokes and his team strung a ton of rackets. But Jay Lewandowski is under contract with several big schools, including Notre Dame, Indiana, Mississippi State, Texas A&M, Wake Forest, the schools like that that happened to be at the tournament would have used Jay and his team off campus somewhere to string. Wow. And, so, um, so the colleges are going to pick up the bills, right? Because, you know, customizing, yeah. you know, if you've got four or five rackets that you're matching, you're maybe customizing pallets or, or you know, changing up pallets. You're, uh, you know, uh, changing the uh, the uh, uh, swing weight and all that. Um, that's, you know, that's that, that costs a little bit of money. And so, you know, for most college players, you know, they're, 
that's a little bit, you know, I yeah, think outside of the like, scope. So. And again, I know the schools are different, but like here, each player gets three rackets. I don't remember if it's a semester or a year, but they'll buy them three rackets and custom out and do whatever they want to with them, but they'll get three rackets. I think it's every semester. That's pretty good because three rackets for a year for a college player, they're pretty beat up at the end of yeah. the year. Yeah. You almost need to buy three on your own. You really, you want to have six. And, oh, yeah. and I recommend to some of my high performance players is, and I don't know if you do Herb or if any of your players do this to number your rackets. So when you bring a racket to, you know, Pat or Herb or myself, you know, when I string it, I make a note that this was number two. And when you're having a great day on the court, you know, take a look at the racket you were using and just dot down that you played with number two today. And you may develop a pattern eventually. Or, geez, you're always having good days with number two. Maybe I should, you know, get these customized and see, you know, how close do they match up in balance and weight. And yeah, so that's, that's totally you know, important. When you're trying to take it to the, to the next level, you kind of have to start looking at these things. And the first thing is really you want to look at your technique, right? And your tactical and your smarts on the court. And once you get that down, you know, the next step I think is, and the guy at Luxlon talked about this, is you want to make sure you're in the right racket, right? You want to make sure that you test some rackets. And then the third thing is you really start looking at the string, right? So it doesn't, if you've got crappy technique, you really don't focus so much on the string right now. Fix your forehand, fix your backhand, fix your volley grip, whatever it is. But but at this high elite level, it's like you're looking for marginal gains wherever you can get them. And and sometimes it's with the stringing and what you're doing and paying attention to that. So Jay Lewandowski, he also sees a lot of the same usual suspects, Selenko Hyper G, Selenko Torbite, Luxlon ALU and ALU Rough. Luxalon 4G, Yonix Polytor Pro. He said the men and women use similar strings, but he sees a pattern of the women women using uh, smaller gauge, thinner gauges, right? So the men are using a little bit thicker gauges. Um, he um, his company is called Game Set Match, um, and like I said, he's out of North Carolina, but he's he's uh, the official stringer at Miami Open. So he does a lot of pro stuff too. Del Rey, San Diego. He, he did the Lexington Challenger, the Louisville Challenger, you know, the Bermuda ATP Challenger, the Houston ATP event. So he's done quite a bit of stringing. And um, then, like you said, he's got this whole college, uh, um, you know, arsenal of teams under his under his wing and stuff. That's, so That's a great, and, you know, that's a great gig too. And when, you, when we're talking about, you know, getting, you know, looking for places where you can, you know, uh, find your niche for stringing and so forth. That is another way to, to move yourself up to the pro level, you know, the college level, you totally know, figure, figure out in your city or in your area, you know, the schools that are out there, you know, start at the community college level, right. Try to get yeah. in there, figure out a way you can, you know, connect with those players and, and then like, you know, figure out a way you can get into, um, into the college stream. Cause you know, there's people that do all sorts of things that, you know, they go around the country in their van with their stringing machine, just park it in a parking lot somewhere and just string rackets at some of these, you know, tournaments or parks, city tournaments or college, you know, parking lots or whatever it is. Right. I mean, there's, there's just opportunities. You obviously got to be careful, you know, where you're, you don't want to step on other people's territory or whatever, but yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to, um, to uh, get started stringing in these. I mean, cause how many colleges do we have? You know, I mean, there's gotta be. Oh, Four hundred or something. <laughs> so yeah, four hundred. It's it's everywhere. So uh, you know that's. Yeah, I've, I've had people call me over the years, ask me even how advice on how to get in the door at universities where they live or stuff. So I try to help. But. And by the way, Jay strings with a Battle Out Star Five. I asked him what he strings on, so that's his preferred method. And by the way, here's something for your listeners. Um, and I know you, you know, I. I can't do this. I'm I'm anchored here and you, you're probably anchored in Hawaii and Herb has a family and he's got a lot of people that depend on him in Texas. But Jay Lewandowski is looking for another full time stringer. And so if any of your listeners are, are quality stringers and do this, you know, they can leave a comment or a way to contact them because Jay would like to hire one more stringer. And, and I asked him, would they be home based? Would they be, you know, would it be just in North Carolina? He said, no, it'd probably be all over the place because they're constantly flying to tournaments and doing this and that. So, so he is looking for a stringer. 
Wow, that's cool. Yeah, maybe in my retirement I'll do that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun to do that. You know, it's fun to do it's fun to to travel and, and string a tournaments for a while. You know, it, it's and if you're if you're young and you don't have a lot of responsibility, like you're saying, that's that's the time to be able to do that kind of thing. But a lot of problems usually when you're that age, either you don't you're not ready mentally or you're not ready, you know, to string at that level a lot of times when you're you're young. So it kind of works out, right? As you get older, you kind of build a little bit more response, you're a little more responsible and a little bit more uh in tune with, you know, um, your abilities and so forth. But yeah, we have a few uh, um, here on the stream. We have, you know, PCS stringing has been giving us a lot of comments and, you know, he was talking a little bit earlier about, there's a reason when we were talking about um, 4G and we're talking about Luxalon and stuff, he was saying, there's a reason why 4G has, has good tension maintenance. There's a reason why for, okay. Yeah. I, I guess I'm not, I don't get that one, but um because he was saying la he was laughing out loud. So, um, but another thing is, uh, he's talking myth. about, he's yeah, talking, probably. oh, it's a myth, right? Yeah, he's talking about pre stretching uh, poly as well. And, you know, we don't really talk much about pre stretching poly, but, you know, I've pre stretched pretty much any kind of string. I mean, I've pre stretched a basic synthetic gut. I mean, multi filaments make sense, right? Because it's a pretty elastic string. Natural gut, of course, pre stretching. Um, polys, I've pre-stretched a few polys and, you know, you could take out some of that, that elast elasticity that, um, or w which would later on maybe turn into some potential, uh, uh string loss, um, tension loss, you know, yeah. but, but the thing that I'm kind of always going back and forth on is you don't want to take every bit of elasticity out of your strings before you put them in your racket, right? right. You want them to have some of that because really what you're doing is you are breaking down the particles in the string when you, when you, you know, pre-stretch like that, right. To a certain, to its tensile strength, right. And to, to its breaking point or whatever. But, you know, you see, um, you know, uh, stringing machines can do the pre-stretching as well. Right. You can yeah. do double. Well, I, I never use my machine to do any pre-stretching. And then there's some, there's some stringers that like to just let the string, pull until it stops and then you let it sit for another five ten seconds to make sure it's completely like pulled everything out of it i don't and then it becomes in my opinion it becomes a little bit um uh difficult to keep that maintenance of that tension specific on every racket because you're not always going to be waiting the exact amount of time. So if you're waiting on one racket, you're waiting, okay, I'm going to wait five seconds. Okay. If you do that throughout that whole racket and then later on you string another racket that for that player. And then what if you left it out a little bit longer, the six or seven seconds or whatever, it's going to change a little bit. I think the tension's going to change a little bit. Yeah. So can you I imagine? Just, yeah. So I just tend to wait until the machine stops and the lights, you know, it, the machine tells me, hey, you know what? You can go ahead and clamp now. Um, if I pre-stretch the string ahead of time and then I use that method, I think I'm pretty good. You can know, you I imagine if you're a tournament stringer and they're on court and they want you to rush and get them a racket and your system is to wait 10 seconds after each pull? No, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> match would be over. Yeah. yeah the, match, the match would be over. You've got 10 minutes. 10, 12 minutes max to get the racket um, cut, strings cut out, racket strung, racket stenciled back on the court. In, in, the, in the comment, Jason mentioned, you know, is it better to use a high end multi filament? I think so. Now, you know, a lot of players don't get the benefits of a poly unless you're really at that high, high level with an extremely fast swing speed. So I, you know, I, I think a, 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 if you want to go with a 15 gauge uh, multi, uh, X1, whatever it is, uh, you know, NXT, um, you know, uh, Technofiber, uh, what, whatever it is. I, I love a multi. The next thing would be the hybrid. Um, so, Or even the TNT. You know, TN, we don't talk a lot about gamma TNT, but, you know, that's a good uh, uh, complement, complementary string to a lot of uh, hybrids yeah. because it's a smooth string. It works well with a lot of the other strings as far as gliding and so forth. So it's not... It's not too abrasive, and it it it's a it's a pretty giving string. I, I mean, I think I think it's a good mix in between. Like it's kind of I I consider it between a multi and a and just a basic synthetic. You know, as far yeah. as 
you know what what it can do for you but yeah ashaway is popular mono gut but it's it can be very temperamental you've got to be careful with that ashaway ashaway mono gut is really yeah. you got to pull it very very slow and and be very careful i just want to real quick um i talked to one other person and i just want to because he took time to talk to me um about what he sees out there his name is pat nickel and he is a he was a division uh, or he was a, a college coach in all three divisions for 20 years and now he manages Indianapolis Racquet Club team sports division and he oversees dozens of colleges he places their orders for them like like Herb said he's one of the schools got you know tons of Salinko so this is what Pat does and um, at the Indianapolis Racquet Club their pro shop does about 7,500 rackets a year so it's a real busy busy club yeah. Most of the strings that he orders is Selenko Torbite 16 and 16L, Selenko Hyper G 16 and 16L, Luxlon ALU Power, Yonix Polytor, and he, he orders some Technofiber Black Code. And he said he just placed an order for Florida State, and all they wanted was Luxlon ALU Power and Babolat RPM Blast. Um, so that was that was kind of Pat's experience with uh, what he sees out there. And I did reach out to about... 12 or 15 NCAA college players on the men and women's side. Um, and I heard back from uh, three top, three of the top 10 guys in the country got back to me. Uh, the number five player in the country is uh, out of Ohio state. And I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. It's a uh, Matej M A T E J Vosel V O C E L. And he uses uh, Luxalon 4G, and he, um, you know, and I said that's a, a very stiff string, but it's a full bed. The number four player in the country got back to me at the University of Kentucky. His name's Gabriella or Gabrielle Diallo, and he's in um, Selenko Torbite, which is a fairly uh, softer, is 203 string stiffness, but 47% tension loss. And then I heard from the number one player in the country right now, and his name is August Holmgren, and he's at University of San Diego, and he uses a Selenko Torbite Diamond Rough, and uh, that's a 52% a tension loss string. So, And then uh, the number one player at Syracuse University, she's number 11 in the country, and she's using Yonix Polytor Pro in blue. So... Um, so that that was kind of all the notes I took on that. Um, but it wow, seems yeah, like you, you did you did quite a lot of research on that. Um, you know, when you see some of the college players using some of these strings that that don't have very good tension maintenance. I mean, to some degree, you know, they're they're getting sponsored by it. They have like what Herb was saying. They have a an opportunity to get so many rackets strung. A lot of it's not you know out of their pocket. So I, I guess they can really um work with strings like that of course if you you are a lower tiered player or lower tier you know uh lower division college player things might be a little bit different right and yeah. so you really want to do your own research and stuff but you know it, it definitely looks like Selenko is uh is the brand that we've been hearing about um that the colleges are using it i think they're out based out of california somewhere i think in san diego or southern california somewhere i think that's where they're uh U.S. headquarters. I don't. I don't know where the strings are made. Um, I like to know a little bit more about where that where it comes from. But um, it's it's definitely made a made a big impact. Um, you know, uh, I think um, PCS stringing. Yeah, he he he. Earlier when we were talking a little bit about the pre stretching, he was saying that um, that manual pre stretching can also be as equally inconsistent. And he's got a good point. You know, it's all whoever is actually doing the polling, right? Um, cause you're going to do it a little bit different than me. I mean, you know, the idea is pull it tight a couple times. You're using about 40 pounds pressure or whatever. You just brace yourself and you just kind of know the feel of how much you should be pulling. And then once that string re releases and you can see it, the coils, you know, being, um, stretched out of it, then you kind of know, okay, you know, that, that works for me, but yeah, you're right. That could, that could also cause inconsistency. So, and, and he feels that maybe the machine actually, the machine pre-stretch is actually more consistent because it's going to pull it the same way each time. So, yeah, that's a good point too on, on, on your end. But I mean, for me, 
the I think the system works okay as far as if I need to pre-stretch, I'm going to wrap it around a pole, pull it a couple times at a certain tension, you know, I mean force, and uh, and then I'm going to clamp when um, when the machine basically tells me to uh, that it's done pulling. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but the th the reason I like to manually stretch the gut is just to get the dog on thing to straighten out a little bit so it's, you know, it doesn't kick up so much. It makes it a lot easier to string then. That's yeah. another reason why, yeah. But I also noticed that uh, he made it, and I think PCS, I think his name is Wes. But, okay. Uh, uh, he also made a comment about they won't try things other than the big name brands. And that kind of true, kind of not. And this is just a trend I think I see. A lot of the kids, when they first get here, they're bringing the strings with them that they've played in the juniors or nice. what they were sponsored by. So, you know, like I've got, this is just the girl. These are the strings that just the girls here play with. And uh, a lot of them, let's see. Uh, yeah. right. This girl is sponsored by Head, but she brought her Head string with, with her. Uh, we got another one, that's not, another one that's junior was sponsored by Technofiber. That's what she brought with her. Uh, but when they get here, because the coaches are sponsored by Selenko, they'll try to get them into the Selenko because they don't have to pay for it. And if they exactly. like it, they'll stick with it. If not, then they will shop around. for. But they, I've had kids come here, you know, playing MSV and uh, Pacific and, I mean, all kinds of streets. But it's what they're playing in the juniors. They get here, and I think a lot of them, that's what they've always played, and they've never had the opportunity to play RPM because yeah. it's yeah. all too much. And now they're out of college saying, hey, I got 20 reels of this in the back. Well, I'm going to play it. So that's what they did. Brand, and, you know, it's brand, brand recognition too, right? Like yeah. what Babylon did with rackets. They got him in the hands of the juniors early. And, uh, you know, uh, in good good high school players, good college players. And, yeah. and you know, that's how they made made uh, made an in with their rackets, right? Um, yeah. Well, see, years back in was either 14 or 15 and earlier, uh, the school here, they were sponsored by Babylon. So everybody had Babylon bag. They're all playing Babylon rackets and they're all using RPM. And then back in, I think it was 16, maybe that's when Selenko stepped in and took the contract over. So now everything's Selenko. And they used to, they used to get the Babylon free. So, You're on mute, yeah. Pat. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You know, Jason just had a good um, question earlier. Um, I just wanted to, make sure we address that at what level meaning like 3.4 4 5 5 0 whatever does poly make a difference in terms of spin versus um uh, multi-filament and i think brad you were talking about that earlier as far as you know work on your game you know make sure you have the right racket and then strings are kind of number three so i would say really you know a three-five player isn't going to know the difference between any kind of poly, necessarily, to where it's going to be a benefit or a detriment. I think. Yeah, I think so too. And I think with poly, you really need those fast swing speeds to take advantage of the construction of the string. You're not going to get the benefits, you know, if you're if you're hitting a, a very slow you know back to front swing you know you're going to enjoy the multi-filament much better it's for those big massive power hitters who need a bit of control and stuff and they're not going to get it with a full bed of multi or sin or nylon or gut um that's when you want to start getting into the poly it's going to help tame your, your your shots a little bit um so that's you know that and string breakage so but i think like if you're going to put poly in your frame and you're a great player and it's going to last you 20 hours i would say go to a thinner gauge poly get something that's going to break after seven to ten hours because that's about when the string's going to start losing its life so mm -hmm. i think if you're keeping it in for too long you're going to miss out on a lot of benefits and you're going to you know have some poor performance um toward the end of that uh, that string before it breaks so i would say if you're breaking a 17 gauge in three hours, I would go with a 16 gauge if it gets you 10 hours. But if that 16 gauge is getting you 20 hours before it breaks, I'd go into a 17 or vice versa. If the 17 is lasting you for 20 hours, maybe try an 18. So, but it, but if but if you have that swing speed, you're probably not going to last that long in 
17 gauge, you're probably yeah. going to break it in eight, yeah, 10 hours. Really, really good. And, and, uh, Herb, I see in the background there, you've got a lot of reels and really if you're stringing for, if you're stringing for a lot of, uh, players, like college players and, and team players, reels is the way to go, right? Um, you don't need the sets. I think the sets, you know, as a home, as a part-time stringer or a home stringer or a, you know, as a, as your sidekick, as your, uh, you know, kind of as just your, uh, your side gig. Um, the only reason that you would really need to have individual sets is if you are um, really wanting to show people kind of like, um, you know, what, what it is exactly. Um, because reels are going to save you so much money, I think. And it's easier for high breading. It saves on the environmental, you know, all the materials, all the packaging stuff. Um, but I don't know what, what's your guys's take on, on the reels versus the sets. Oh, so I've got reels up here, and I've also got my cart over here that I have a bunch of reels on. But the, the sets that I have are the ones that I probably don't sell a half a reel's worth in a year. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just buy them in the sets, because I don't sell very many of them. Yeah. Whereas the reels, I mean, I've got six reels of just uh, died on solstice. So I don't yeah. have stuff like that around here. And some and some strings don't come in in uh, in sets. Some strings they just make them in reels. Yeah. So you, sometimes you have to buy them in reels if, if you if you even want to you know try that string. Or um, I know some of the smaller manufacturers of strings. A lot of times they're just producing reels, or the majority of their strings they're releasing. There's yeah, I, reels. I know Brad has like looks like about fifty different strings behind him. I try to keep. Yeah, I know. I've got, well, yeah, I've got this like was pointing. This and, is uh, just for my Zoom over, calls. Yeah, yeah this looks good. Good. These are all empty packages, Herb. I got them from the pro shop <laughs> down the road. <laughs> the majority, the majority of mine is actually you'll see, and and I have a lot of reels down low here. Oh yeah, all my reels are down low. I probably have twelve or fifteen different reels, but but I you know I I do have I overdid it with um with buying buying just packages and stuff but i do like to have a ton of different kinds because yeah. i'll always get players who don't know what they want you know who just like to switch it up every time they just mm -hmm. are looking for that holy grail of, of tennis strings the, this the string that's going to make them feel like they hit a hole in one the whole match you know right. Cause, um, cause it, and i think what you're saying too is like it's just it's all for visual because even when i when i had a tennis shop right and i was i had the whole walls, you always want to have all these strings on the walls so people can see a hundred strings. You know, I don't know why, because, you know, it's just your, your idea of like, oh, yeah, I just want to have all these varieties so people can see that we have all these strings. But people just every once you'll get a few people that are actually looking and looking at all the strings. But for the most part, they're just like, OK, yeah, just they, they already know what they want or they're just mm -hmm. going to call it out. And, you know, it's nice to have that reference. But. You're, you're right. You could just probably have an empty, empty package back there and then just have it all in reels. That makes more sense. Yeah. And you yeah. ever get so much money. You spend so much money yeah. on buying. That's a huge yeah. investment. I mean, I've got more money in tennis string than I do machines. Yeah. That's yeah. a huge investment to have, you know, I mean, there's got to be $3,500, $4,000 worth of between there and there string. Yeah. And that's a huge investment to just have sitting around until somebody makes a $3 profit off a racket for it. Yeah, and, uh, like uh, who was a board? Jason was asking what the cost difference is or the value difference. It's probably what 30 40 percent different. Oh, yeah, for real. Yeah, for no question. So that, that's huge. And and especially, let's say you have, let's say you're stringing for yourself and you have a pattern that's you know 16 by 18, you know, and so you only need 35 feet of string. Every one of these sets have 40 feet, so every time you'd string, you'd be wasting five feet of string. So that's where a reel is going to save you a ton of money. If you've got a really open string pattern, you might save a, a fortune. So, you know, where you're paying $22 a set for, say, NXT with a reel, you might get it down to like, you know, especially when you get a, a sale out there, you're getting down to $13 to $15 a set. So, yep. and, and it's important too. I think um, we talked about this before, but on your reel, it's important every time you pull half a set off or every time you pull a full set off, to have a make a mark on yeah. the reel somewhere and i think you do that brad yeah because you you really need to know you really want to know how much is in there 
and um, what you got left. Yep. So every time you put just one little notch for a, a whole set or something, and then yeah, a, the half set and whole set. No. So yep, yep. And and when I when I cut, you know, when I uh, measure, like if I'm doing a two piece and I'm measuring and I and I need you know a half set, I'm I'm usually gonna be pulling 20 feet off of there. I'm not going to go 18 and a half feet. And then, so I do waste a little bit of string, you know, and then I cut it before, you know, I, when I measure my racket and I go, okay, well, you know, I could save a little bit. I mean, I do that sometimes. Now, if I, if I'm stretching or if I'm pulling, if I'm uh, measuring straight from the reel on the racket onto the racket, then I might go a little bit lower, you know, because I don't need, 20 feet i probably need 18 and a half or whatever based on you know doing the measurements if it's a 16 or or 18 mains or whatever so it all depends but uh, one of the worst feelings I waste a little bit i tend to waste a bit of string yeah and I, well, I was gonna say one of the worst feelings i have as a stringer is when i get to the end of a reel and i need say i need 20 feet of string and i pull it out and i only get 16 feet <laughs> and i know damn well I could have been served a little better. And yep. that. <laughs> yep, yeah, that happens. And and when you're at a tournament and they give you the reel, right? You're using the reel. A lot of times, you know, at, at a big tournament, you, you're getting a fresh reel or, or close to it. But a lot of times, you know, the players that give you these reels and there's like, you have no idea what's on there and you're looking at it. I hope this is one set. And so sometimes you really have to stretch it because, you know, sometimes they know how much they have on there and they're like, well, this is how much all I need for string and two rackets. How come you're wasting string? So at a tournament, you definitely have to be uh, cognizant of of uh, not wasting string when, you know, because some players have it measured to a T. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Y'all have, have had to have this happen when players will come up to you or a coach will come up to you and they'll go like this. I have many rackets left on that. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, four? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I have that all the time. Somebody walk up. How many rackets were right. left on that? Because after a while, you kind of know, you kind of learn, but it, it's, yeah. it's hard to tell sometimes with all that and stuff. But yeah. Um, and, you know, we were trying to keep this to a 30 minute um, uh, stream, right? And we're at 47 minutes. So, you know, I don't think we can, you know, go under an hour for this stuff. But it's, it's fun to chat about all these different things. And uh, we might as well just for today, let's just do this one stream. Like, you know, I know initially we were planning on some other things, but maybe let's just do this one stream so we can go another five minutes and then call it a day. Sure. You guys want to do that? That'll work. Yeah. So I don't know. We should always end with it. If there's actually anybody still watching to the end, we have a few people. But, you know, I know people like after about 20 minutes, they really start to um, fall off, you know. So if anybody watches to the end, we want to give them a couple good tips. So I don't know. Um, Brad, well, I mean, one tip we talked about, met, um, Marking on your reels, marking um, how many sets you've taken out of it or how many half sets. That's yes. important, right? That's a good tip. Uh, yeah. What's what's another tip, um, Herb? Do you have a, a good tip? Oh, I didn't even think of one today. I don't. Yeah, you always you always got some good tips though. You come up with some good stuff. Man, I don't know why. You can come up with something. I'll I'll think of something else too that relates to. Uh, um, uh, know your market when you're buying string because it's kind of like we we're talking about you don't want to get into the point where I mean I've well uh, the vice cannon up there I've got two real device cannon I might sell a racket a year so know your yeah. market you don't get stuck with thousand dollar worth of string you're not going to sell yeah that's a good point. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna be putting your used reels on eBay, right? I yeah. see uh, people do sell you know partial reels on eBay, and that's just like well. Yeah, if if you know, if you can kind of guesstimate uh, how many sets are left on that reel or whatever, or just lowball it, sometimes you can get a good deal. I mean, again, we talked about this before. We don't know where the string's been. If it's been sitting in the back of a car in somebody's tennis bag for four months in the sun, or or who knows, right? Right. Oh, but yeah, I mean, I guess you could weigh it. PCS strings tip: weigh the full reels, then you can weigh partial reels to determine remaining length. Good point. If you buy a 660 mm -hmm. reel and it has, you know, enough in it for 16 and a half sets um, and you pull a bunch off of there and then measure again, I guess you can take percentages and figure this out. Yeah, it's good a good point. idea. 
that's a good idea but you have to start with obviously when it's new so so you have an idea and um i never really uh that that's a good tip i i, I guess i hadn't really thought about doing that and um uh, we'll have to i'll have to mark that down because that that does make sense you know to be able to do but you're not going to be able to compare once it once you've taken some sets off of there i think but or you could but i don't know it's harder but that's a good tip um brad what about you another tip this is, well it, it's it's a tip i learned um recently from uh, from another stringer and i can't remember his name but he happens to be in hawaii i think i shared it with you and and i and it's worked really well it's it's basically you you go get a piece of pvc pipe and cut a few inches off and this is just you know plastic white pvc pipe i wrapped it in grip and i put a little piece of leather on the end cut a hole through it and when you're stringing let me grab a racket when you're stringing i use a starting clamp for the outside of my mains right, right. or outside of my crosses and normally i'll you know put yeah. it right up against the string yeah. occasionally this starting clamp can damage or crush or depending on the string or if you don't put the string all the way down properly, it might pull part of it through and you scuff the string. So now the, the string that you've got to use to tie the knot is slightly damaged. Mm -hmm. So what this does is you basically feed the string through the hole into, into here, right? And you put yeah. it through here and then you clamp the string on the outside and pull the tension. Okay. So... So the whole purpose of that is twofold, right? One, to keep the clamp off of your frame because it's going to, because this round thing is going to disperse the weight a little bit differently. So you don't have all the weight of the starting clamp against the frame. And yes. also, so the end of the string doesn't get damaged. Is that? It doesn't get damaged. Yeah. So now yeah, what Yeah, because the starting clamp is going to crush your string a little bit, no matter what. It's going to crush yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. now I, I don't have to tie the crushed part of the string because yeah, this, yeah, so, so it's nice. So I, that, that worked out really well and I feel bad. I don't remember the guy's name because I just right. watched his video recently. Right. And yeah. anyway, you know, Barnell has, also, the, I think the, band, but he also has the Barnell block. And yes, the block right. the same thing. I, and I had somebody sent this one to me. It's uh, just a wood block. They drilled the hole through. And yeah. This from Bradley's racket. Or this Bradley's yeah. offset tool. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then of course, and then of course you have the things like the Parnell loop thing, you know, he's got the Parnell uh, leather pad that he puts between the frame yeah. and his starting clamp. So that's supposed to cushion that. And I like that idea too. I mean, you could take a piece of leather, cut a strip in it, and then put it over the string in between your starting clamp. That I think would be just, I don't know yeah. if that, I don't know if that would solve everything that, that the that and does, but you know, I like the idea of maybe getting it. At, yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of different ways to do it. I have never had. I mean, honestly, I mean, I've used the starting clamp for many years, and I've I use it all the time, every racket, and I've never really damaged a racket using a that I know of using a starting clamp at the edge of the frame. But just over the recent years, I've seen more people come up with different ways of keeping that starting clamp off of the. Um, uh, off of these things um yeah we're getting a lot of comments i mean we got alan and of course we got pcs so pcs stringing i think that's uh oh no no that's not jason jason's different uh, than, than yeah, he, and he's correct pcs yeah. stringing the guy's name is albert morata yeah and that, that's where i got got that tip from yeah albert, yeah yeah yes. yeah yeah because he's over on oahu he's on the big eye uh i mean, on the main um you know, oahu you know hawaii the the main our main island i don't want to say the big island because the big island is a different island <laughs> so it's it's the main island <laughs> when you think of hawaii you know but um yeah that's where most of the people are it's got to think a million and a half people there or something like that so herb you're getting starting up pretty soon then right colleges after uh christmas yeah, Jan break yeah january the 5th well it'll, it'll take off mm -hmm. you'll be oh, busy so just for clarification because i know you guys have mentioned in videos i don't do like two three thousand a year i've had a good year this year I've done, I've done about 1850 ish this year. That's a good year, but I'm you I probably average 1500 a year. 
Uh, we're we're inflating your ego a little bit. Yeah, you know what? When we do these videos in about six months, we're gonna go. Yeah, Herb, he strings about four thousand rackets. It's just gonna keep increasing. And he's <laughs> stringing, he's stringing about eight rack, eighteen uh, eight thousand rackets a year. Yeah, that's funny. But yeah, you do you do you, you do a lot of business out there in Texas. I hope sometime I can uh, come out there and visit you and and see you know I'll cut out strings. I'll uh, volunteer at your table and uh, I'll cut out the strings for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> out of the rackets. You know that's a, that's actually a good job for people who are wanting to get into stringing to see if they really want to do tournament stringing. Just yeah. you know have them come. They can check in the rackets, cut out the strings, get the rackets ready for you. Uh, that's a yeah. good. I think it's a good uh, segue into uh, tournament stringing. Well, I think some I of this. Want to get my attention? About oh. thirty minutes. <laughs> I think some of the stringers at these tournaments are are just as exhausted, if not more exhausted, than the players when they come off the court. It is mentally grueling. I've done maybe seventeen to twenty in a day, and that's crazy. And that's maybe half of what they're doing at these tournaments. And I'm sure Herb does it. Yeah. A, had a ton of days like that and it's it's draining yeah 15 my, hours yeah my biggest day you know my biggest day ever i started at 7 a.m and i finished at 2 30 the next morning when we did and i did 61 rackets and uh yes. i say me my wife ended up helping me for about the last hour and a half two hours but she's about a racket and a half an hour yeah so and, I probably and you know, it's it. not right it's not just that too it's that Mentally, you have to be, you know, on top of your game. All I mean, you can, you know, to some degree, right? It's all automatic after a while, right? You can, you can almost do it without even thinking. However, you know, in order, if you have two or three rackets from the same player and they need to be the same, you have to keep that in your head, and you have to just be able to focus on that. And um, to be able to be that sharp for, you know, 15, 17 hours sometimes, like you know, Herb was saying too. It's like, I don't know that. It takes a special breed because it's oh. like you do it for a while, but it's like it, it's pretty grueling. And then, the you know, your hands and your back and whatever else, you know. Well, if anyone to... claims they can tell the difference between 62 and 62 and a half pounds, it's going to be the players <laughs> you're stringing for. You yeah. know, right? it's, it's not your nine year old daughter you're stringing for. You got to <laughs> get everything right. Yep. Yep. They, they, they seem to be able to um, <laughs> nail it down to a half kilo or whatever. And stuff, yeah. so, you know, and and you know when you when you start getting after midnight and you're you're out there still stringing and stuff, you start to get a little, you know, you start dreaming, daydreaming or whatever it is, and you know, you just never know, right? You forget to change the tension on the machine, and you look at the machine and go, oh no, you know, you have to start over. You can't you can't fake yeah. it. Yeah, and at, at a certain point, you know, if you're in a big stringing room, it might be different. But, you know, everything I do is usually just me, and I might have somebody help me every once in a while. But at a certain point, everything kind of changes because everything gets real quiet. Because, you know, there's a hub. Everybody, you got players, you got coaches, you got yeah. officials, you got all this. Then all of a sudden, at some point in time, everybody's gone. It's just you. And man, it, it makes every racket seem like it takes an hour. You know? Yep. Ah, yep. Man, it's, it feels like it. Yep. Alan, <laughs> Alan, maybe. Ellen made a good point. Every half pound is how many inches past the baseline, <laughs> or I guess he's he's at, he's almost. I don't know if he's questioning or whatever, but yeah, it's making a statement, kind of like yeah, you, that's right. You know, it's like yeah. every pound you're off, you know, it's gonna go just that little bit, you know, off, right? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's a pretty precise thing, and um, you know, the, the the stringers that have it the worst at the tournaments are the ones that are probably you know stringing the higher level players. Because they're going to be, you know, a lot of times the better string, you know, the, the stringers that can handle more workload or they can handle more of that stress. They usually get handed a lot more of the rackets that 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 make a difference for those, you know, for those players. And so they'll get they'll get some they'll have longer days sometimes, um, but not always. I mean, some of the other it just depends on what the draw is. Um, but, you know, you could be because usually you have to stay until you know, your players are done for the day. So for some people, you know, their days are a little bit easier, but then just depends on what the draw was and, 
you know, what players you got, because sometimes you end up, you're, you're standing there with a few other people, but a lot of people have gone home already. A lot of the stringers and you're mm-hmm. stuck there because your players are still playing. Have you guys ever had to do um, for a client what uh, Federer puts in his strings? I forget what those little things are called in between. You know, oh, the, leather, the little leather um, in between. Not the leather pads, but he puts those little like string savers. Oh, the string yeah, like, savers. Okay. I've done that a few times, but not that many players would. They'll do it either. They do it themselves because they want it in, mm-hmm. in between specific strings. Yeah. And they have their own, and they do it after you give them the racket. Um, yeah, string savers. I don't think I've ever – I've maybe put it in one or two rackets. It's mostly the players do it. And not that many people use it anymore. No, yeah, the only ones around here that do it are really old players. They're probably in their 70s, 80s. Yeah. Better do does it in all his rackets, right? And he's stringing 800, 850 a year. And I imagine it's not Roger that's putting them in. No, probably not. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean – you know, back in when when more players were just using gut, um, I think you saw that a lot more, right? Keeps the uh, friction, yeah. keeps the friction off of it and stuff. Um, but yeah, I I don't see that being used that much anymore. Here's one thing I was going to ask her because, and I was and I talked to Pat about this last week. Um, there's a, a guy I spoke to in Texas. I think he said he's in Texas, and he's got a couple of strings that he's promoting now. And I think he said he's got the number one player at Harvard using his string. These Genesis strings, he, mm-hmm. he sent me a few to try. Yeah, you, I've used Genesis before. Okay, so do you have some players you, you, you're stringing? He's, he's kind of getting I, going. I up. don't right now, but I have seen some players come through using the Genesis. Okay. He said it's more popular in Central South America, but he's trying to, to get it around here, and he said well, he's going to. Yeah, see, the ones that I have that are usually from Argentina – because we have two guys from Argentina on the men's team. When they first got here, that's what they were playing with Genesis. Oh, they, okay. they both switched over to Slinko. No, they did. Yep. Interesting. But again, was, sorry, I was, I was the coaches are trying to push Slinko because they're getting it free. Oh, yeah, players. I was I was reading some of the notes. What Brad, you were talking about what string? White Tech. No, remember I talked to you last week, Pat, about the fellow in Texas who's got this. Oh, company. Genesis. Yeah, yeah. They, they only had a few strings, but. Oh, yeah, wow. so I, I made the comment that, that he said they're popular in Central and South America, and then Herb said two of the players he strings for from Argentina were in Genesis, but now they switched over to Salinko. Yeah, because I know, like, they're starting to, uh, like, Genesis is trying to get back, like you were saying, back in the market a little bit or or really promote. Yeah, I mean, that's that's tough, you know, having a small having a small brand, just getting it out there. Um you know, I don't really know what what strings cost production wise per set. I mean, I've I've seen some people sell string poly string pretty cheap, and I know some production can be pretty inexpensive. But I don't know. You know, I guess it all depends on volume and uh, the machines. Yeah, well. marketing. Yeah. Now, is is PCS stringing? Are you a home stringer, a business? Where's your shop set up? What what kind of output are you are you doing? I'm wondering. We'll see if he see if they're still here. If they answer, yeah, I think he's, I think he's still here. He's been because he made a comment about. Oh no, Alan was making a comment about Fed. No, actually, PCS was also talking about Feder only uses ten string savers, and oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, here. He, um, oh no, he was. I'm curious about their trionic triangular string. Trionic. I think that must be through Genesis, right? So what what sets do you have, Brad, from Genesis? Well, right now I have. Uh, like how many do they have on their line of in their line of strings? He gave me. Well, right now he gave me uh, Genesis. Uh, it's called Hex Hexa Infinite. Okay. And he gave me uh, Hexonic 2.0. And then he has these two str- other strings called Sigmum Pro. Right. And this yeah, one I, is. I, I've seen Sigma. I, don't, I think I even have. I don't know. Matteo Berrettini uses this one. Matteo yeah. Berrettini. Oh, no, I don't have any of that yet. Okay. Yeah. And then he's got the Signum Pro Tornado. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I think the tension maintenance on, I think the Signum Pro, a few of them were pretty decent. I don't I don't recall now, but I thought it. I thought some of those were pretty decent, but yeah. Um, um, yeah. So, um, 
I guess, yeah, I mean, we could we could be here all day, but um, maybe off topic, but why Prince Racket is not popular anymore? Well, Prince has gone through a lot, as far as from what I know. Prince Prince and Wilson, many years ago, they were almost head-to-head -head on uh, market share to some degree. I mean, Wilson was always a little bit ahead, but then, you know, they've gone through a couple, like, uh, bankrupts, or at least, I think, one bankruptcy, um, They've been bought out several times by, you know, Benetton owned them at one time and now another sports group owns them. So I think they're just trying to keep it afloat because it's easy to keep it afloat because it's got a name still from all those years ago. But the, as far as I know, they hardly not everybody offers the string anymore. Um, and it's a little bit more limited. I don't I don't think they come out with as much string um, as a lot of the other companies. They just kind of keep their line. Um, and the rackets, I don't think they do as much as they used to. You know, Chang kept them going, I think, for many years, right? I mean, um, he he was using that extended racket for a while. And, and you know, Prince was like the top racket brand back in the 80s and in, into the 90s, I think. I mean, they were, you know, they had some top notch. And most of the play players at that time, I think, were using Prince. I remember. Yeah, it's either Prince or Wilson or... You know, um, maybe one or two. Jay others. Berger using the Prince Pro, remember? Jay Berger yeah, he, and the Prince Pro. Yeah, the and then that the green. You're talking about just the green. No, the just green, the the black, black one, the black with the it. green stripe. Kmart. Yeah, right. yeah, the original. Yeah, I mean, so because recently I was looking it up, trying to figure out. Okay, not everybody sells a string anymore. What's going on with Prince? I don't ever hear anything. They don't advertise hardly. And that's because they were bought by a large sports group that owns a ton of different uh, uh, sports equipment brands like clothing and other things, you know, the, not just tennis. They own a lot of different brands and they bought um, prints probably pretty cheap, I would imagine. So, yeah, I don't I don't really know what's going on with them. I don't but they still have, you know, the machines. I mean, a couple of the stringing machines are they're decent. They still have. um I think they still make them or, or they still sell them, but yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't put a lot, I don't put a lot of, um, I don't support prints that much. And I mean, you know, slightly off topic, but not entirely. So when Michael Chang was using Prince rackets was around the time I, I used to go to a lot of tournaments and I knew the kind of the Prince rep who, who handled all the affairs for the top players. And I, I just remember that, you know, he was a, he's a, he, he's a born again, Christian, it was very religious and it just he used to sign all of his autographs with a with a Bible uh, passage, you know, whatever it was. And I just remember it was uh, it was interesting that it was one of those things where Prince was like, you know, let's maybe just can you just keep it to your signature? Not everyone is. But 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 that, that's yeah, kind of yeah because I've, I've got the string at some tournaments with with Chang, um, Michael Chang and his brother. It was kind of neat. I mean, he's, he's a really nice guy. He's really kind of quiet. I think his brother used to Carl used to do all the talking mostly yeah. and stuff. And he was, he was, a, he was, a, yeah, I, I, I respected him and, you know, I think he was a really, really good player and, but he, he kept, you know, yeah, he had a lot of criticism, I think. And um, Pam Shriver uh, used Prince Pro also. That's right. Yes. Pam Shriver, that big. big yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Prince these days. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, okay. So we've been going about an hour and ten minutes, hour and seven minutes now. So um, you're gonna have to sign off pretty quick. I got a Christmas party to go to. Yeah, yeah. I've gotta, <laughs> All right. I got to do some holiday stuff as well. But you know, we'll uh, we'll connect uh, again soon, and I'll keep watching your videos. I know Herb, you came out with a couple of videos this last week, and um, you you really put out some really detailed step by step. Uh, tutorials and, and videos on some of these little things that we talk about in the videos and you talk about and mention and stuff. So you can probably head head over to your channel and find some of some of your little tutorials on there, which is great. And uh, need Brad I don't know. to start a channel. What's that? We need Brad to start a channel. <laughs> yeah, I no. just I, I just want to be guests on your channels. All right, so Herb, if you ever want a guest, just keep me in mind. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, yeah. Thanks for your li the listeners and all the comments today, Alan and PCS stringing. Yeah. Jason. Alan, Jason. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Happy holidays, Jason. And uh, everyone stay safe out there on the roads. And I know you guys have, you know, more inclement weather than we have here in Hawaii, but uh, 
But uh, yeah, so have a good Christmas and um, spend time with your families and um, we'll talk soon. All right. Good. All right, good one. See you guys. Bye.